there, friend. Heather Creekmore here. Glad you're listening today to the Compare to Who show. Hey, if you struggle with body image issues, you are in the right place. I'm glad you are here and I'm glad you're listening. I'm especially glad you're listening this month because the whole month of July, I'm doing a series where I am giving you some of my coaching tips. So one of my most enjoyable things to do is to coach women who are struggling with body image in any way, shape, or form. And I've been doing this for about five years now since my book, Compared to Who, came out. And it has been so much fun. Okay, well, fun is just the way I cash things out. But I tell you, it's more than fun. It has been a tremendous blessing in my life to be able to walk with women and see them go from a place of body image bondage where they are just stuck and trapped and always thinking about themselves and their bodies and just not enjoying life to a place where they feel new freedom in Christ, where they feel lighter, where they feel like they can actually just live without the burden of all of these body image and food issues. So anyway, today I just want to give you another tip. Today, we're going to talk about food. Now, I think body image issues have to be addressed and confronted and worked on before you can really work too much on your food issues. But today, my coaching tip is going to surround talking about how you know whether or not your food issues may actually be a problem that you need more help for. So I hope you will Give today's episode a listen and think about it seriously, my friend. Welcome to Compared to Who, the podcast to help you make peace with your body so you can savor God's rest and feel his love. If you're tired of fighting body image the world's way, Compared to Who is the show for you. You've likely heard lots of talk about loving your body, but my goal is different. Striving to fall in love with stretch marks and cellulite is a little silly to me. Instead, I want to encourage you and remind you with the truth of scripture that you are seen, you are known, and you are loved no matter what your size or shape. Here, the pressure is off. If you're looking for real talk, biblical encouragement, and regular reminders that God loves you and you're not alone, you've come to the right place. I hope you enjoy today's show and hey, tell a friend about it. Okay, so let me start today's show by giving the medical disclaimer. I am not a registered dietitian. I am not a doctor. I am not a psychologist. I am not a licensed counselor. None of what I'm saying in today's show is to be considered medical advice or of any kind, right? So take what I'm saying and go talk to your doctor or talk to a registered dietitian or talk to a counselor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist if this rings true and just check it with them. But what I want to talk to today is this very strange concept, okay, that I am finding that most of the women that I know and most of the women that I work with in my coaching business are disordered eaters. Many more of them probably had a full-blown eating disorder at some point that was undiagnosed. And this is my story, my friends. And that's why I wanted to dedicate an episode to it because it's not so much that you need to have a label, right? That you need to be able to wear the label. Oh, I had an eating disorder. Oh, I'm a disordered eater. And I talked about this in a show that I did Uh, Earlier in the spring, uh, where I talked about my own like discovery of figuring out that I had an eating disorder. Um, And so you can go back and listen to that show. I'll try to put a link to it in the show notes. But today, I want to take it just a little bit further as I coach you in this coaching call. I want you to think about your food habits and your thinking about food habits. And I want you to hear some other voices that uh, voices that I've listened to that I have, um, you know, researched and, and voices that I respect who are experts on the subject of disordered eating and eating disorders. And I want you to just kind of do a self-assessment, just a little check. Uh Uh-oh. 
is my issue with food really more than just an issue of going on a diet and going off a diet? Is this really more than just an issue of quote unquote, not having any willpower or quote unquote, not having any self control. And Amy Carlson, and I talked about this big topic um, a month or so ago. Okay, is is my issue with food really something more? And that's where we're going to go today. So the first thing I want to bring up is um, someone I follow on Instagram, Murray Nutrition is the Instagram uh recount name if you want to follow um, this registered dietitian. But she talks about how asking ourselves whether or not this is disordered eating or eating disorder behavior isn't really, these aren't really the questions we need to ask to move towards health and healing. It's not really about saying, okay, I spotted an eating disorder. Oh, okay, I spotted disordered eating. The better questions to ask, as she put it, are, does this help me move towards life? That freedom I talked about. Does this help me move towards healing? healing a relationship with food, healing a relationship with my body. And does this help me move towards freedom? And and what happens too often, I think, in our recovery process is it feels kind of good to be able to put a label on something, right? I know for me, when I finally realized that was an eating disorder, it kind of felt good because Otherwise, it just didn't make any sense that I was so trapped in something and so obsessed with something, right? Now that I've been able to say, oh, no, that was actually an eating disorder, it kind of feels good to think, okay, that's something that I could be healed from. It wasn't, quote, unquote, just me. Um, But I love how Marie Nutrition tries to encourage us that we can't just stay stuck there as we continue to move forward as we do certain things with our food or certain things with our thinking. It's not enough to just say, is this disordered? (laughs) Is this my eating disorder again? We have to say, okay, no, now I'm thinking about healing. Now I'm thinking about the future. But before we can figure out what we're doing in the future, we do kind of have to look back at the past. And so my friend, my coaching tip for you today is if you have been on a lot of diets, in fact, I just saw the statistic that the average 47 year old woman has been on like 61 diets since age 16. Now, one of my clients said, is that 61 like different types of diets? And I'm like, no, I think that's like 61 all-star Mondays. Um, so maybe it's the same diet and the same plan, but it's the all-star Monday <laughs> is, is the start of the new diet. But 61 diets. And if she started, if that's between ages 16 and 47, and 31 years. So I mean, really, it's only an average of two diets a year, right? That's your January New Year's diet and your May diet. Right. And so, oh, my word, friend, if you're more than 47 years old or you started before age 16, maybe your diet number is a whole lot higher than that. I had one client who was like 61 diets. That's what I did last month. (laughs) I was like, that's so awesome. I love your honesty. Ah. But if you've been on a lot of diets, if you have been in a cycle of restriction and then eat and then restriction and then eat, my coaching tip for you today is that you may need more help in the arena of food. You may need to do something like my friends at Body Beloved. They have a diet detox devotional. They also have a curricula and a course. You may need to get in on that. And I'm going to put links to that in the show notes. But they have a food freedom Bible study. There's an online course you can do. There's also a Bible study that you can do in your church. You could facilitate one if you don't have one currently operating at your church. So look in the show notes for all the information. It's for my friends at Body Be Loved. And there are places to get help is my point. And I know you're not alone. So maybe if you throw it out there and offer to facilitate, let me tell you, they make it super easy. They give you everything you need to facilitate. So this is not a huge undertaking from a administrative standpoint. They will help you every step of the way. But if you decide to dig in here, this could be a path to your own freedom and to the freedom of those around you. But you may need to do something more on the food front because although our culture has told us 
that going on diets and off diets is just normal girl behavior, that that's just what's to be expected. That's just what we all do. We, we start restricting and then, oh, we fall off the wagon and we lose our, and I'm putting all this in air quotes, we lose our willpower, we lose our strength and we go off the diet until we can get our strength up again and go back on the diet. And it becomes this cyclical pattern that we just think is normal because quite frankly, everyone we know does it. But my friend, this could be disordered eating or a full-blown eating disorder. And and then the other part of this, and this is a little stickier, and again, talk to your doctor about this, right? There's all kinds of amazing data in books like the Intuitive Eating Book and in books like Health at Every Size, right? But one thing that I've recognized for me personally is that the weight that I think I prefer to be at I can only maintain that weight with an eating disorder. I can only maintain that weight with disordered eating behaviors. So the question isn't so much, could I get down to that weight again? And then there's a whole nother question of whether or not I could stay there, which pretty much all the data says I can't, but that's a whole nother issue. The question is not whether or not I could get there again. The question is whether or not I would be back in an eating disorder if I did. And so the other question I want to ask as I coach you today is that weight that you're dreaming about, can you maintain it without eating disorder behavior? Now, I have friends that have sustained significant weight loss, okay? And I'm going to tread gently here, right? Because maybe that's you listening today. Maybe you have found a way to sustain significant weight loss. But I also want to ask you, if you look honestly at the way that you have fed and nourished your body, the way that you have thought about food since sustaining that weight loss, has that been disordered eating behavior? Has food consumed your life? Has counting things and measuring things and staying on a plan and never being just free to be normal around food, if that's the way it has had to be in order to sustain your weight loss, did that weight loss make you free? Or did that weight loss just make you a prisoner to a new number on the scale? Because the other truth I know is that weight loss doesn't always make you healthier. In fact, for me, weight loss actually probably took me into a place where my health was not as good because I was working out so much that it hurt my adrenals. I was staying in fight or flight all the time and that zaps your adrenal glands, right? You're not really supposed to work out so hard all the time because that is a stress response when you work your heart out that hard. Um, And then not eating also creates a stress response. So the restriction that I was doing to stay a smaller size was hard on my body and hard on my thyroid. And oh, when you have any kind of eating disorder in your past, you know what happens a lot of times? You start to have GI issues. You start to have esophagus issues. My friends that struggled with bulimia have issues with their teeth and their esophagus from purging right? There's all kinds of other health issues that happen from this goal of being thinner or this dream of staying at a goal weight. So if you have this dream in mind that you should weigh X amount or that you need to stay at X amount of weight, my question for you is, can you maintain this weight and have a healthy, normal relationship with food? Or is it more the reality that maintaining this weight requires you to manipulate your body in such a way that you are denying it the food it needs, you are restricting or you are obsessing over food and maybe missing out on some mental health aspects of your physical journey with food that's harming you? Hey there, are we email friends yet? If 
not, what are you waiting for? I would love the chance to connect with you via email. You'll get two messages, three messages a month tops. So I'm not going to be flooding your inbox every day. You'll find out about new episodes. As soon as you sign up, you'll get enrolled in my five day body image freedom email challenge. And you'll also find out about courses, coaching, other things that are going on at Compared to Who that may be helpful for you. I hope you'll sign up to be part of my friends list, my email list today. Just go to comparedto.me and you can take the five day body image email challenge and you'll be signed up there. I hope to connect with you soon. Now, one other quick note on all of this with weight and food is that I've read this in like the Health at Every Size book and maybe even in the Intuitive Eating book, but I am just amazed from my own story and my own experience at how true it has been that now that I've stopped restricting, now that I'm trying to do intuitive eating, how crazy it is that I don't think about food as much as I used to. And my friends, I'm, I'm saying, you know, a lot of, there's a stereotype maybe that it's people that are bigger that think about food a lot or, you know, people that eat a lot think about food a lot. I think it might actually be the opposite. I think maybe people that are trying to stay smaller or always on a diet think about food a lot. And there's studies out there that go right along with this. But one really super funny and practical illustration of this is I used to be a huge Food Network fan. I loved watching Food Network I loved watching all the shows there, The Kitchen, The Pioneer Woman, like you name it. I loved all of those shows. And what is so crazy to me now that I'm just kind of eating freely and just kind of being more comfortable and normal with food and not obsessing over it anymore is that I can't even turn Food Network on. I'm just not interested in it. The other thing that's been fascinating, and I just actually had this conversation with a former client of mine on this topic, but I used to be the food Nazi. Like if my kids were eating the quote unquote mommy food, like the bark fins that I bought just for me or some other treat or snack that I bought just for me that I had like carefully calculated like when I was going to eat it and I'm dreaming and really fantasizing about when I can eat it and I can only eat it at the certain certain time and I can only eat this much and that was my food and I tried to hide it in the pantry some of you are relating to this if my kids found that food and got into that food oh my word I turned into an angry angry person and I would be so mad that they ate my chocolate or found my chocolate stash right but what's been so interesting since I've started this intuitive eating journey is that it's not really all that important to me anymore. I've really been able to loosen the grip that I have, like that tight grip I've had on my quote unquote mommy food, my mommy treats. And I've been able to not care so much. In fact, the other day I sat on the couch and I watched my one child with my bag of bark fins just sit there pop them into his mouth one after another until he was done and I didn't say a word and then my daughter who was also sitting there was like oh hey don't put this away I want some and she sat there and ate them and then the bag was finished and she threw it away friends like a year ago that would have sent me into a spiral like I would have been irate I would have been so angry that they ate my food and I would have been so upset and then I would have been like obsessing like all night long about when am I going to be able to get back to the store to get more of my special food and it would have just been this really big thing and it wasn't at all like it really wasn't all it was like oh well okay no big deal like I had some this week I'll you know I'll get some more at some point I mean friends I think culture has told us I don't think I know culture has told us that the answer to our issues with food is more control control it more Think about it more. If you're not skinny yet, you just keep thinking and controlling more and more and more. And the more thinking and controlling you do over it, the better it will be. Because once you have it mastered, once you have it controlled, then you will be free. 
but I don't know that I've met anyone that is free because they have learned to obsessively control their food. And again, that relates to my friends that have experienced significant weight loss and worked very hard to keep it off. And I think the reason why they've been able to do that is because they have lived in a world of tight, tight control. And that's not freedom. That's not health. We were created for so much more than measuring peanut butter and counting calories. And I wonder to what extent, if you're like me, it's hard to think about doing anything else if I've got to worry about my food like that all day long. Like I really can't accomplish things and be on a diet at the same time. In fact, I wonder just how much more I have actually accomplished in my life since I stopped dieting, since I stopped thinking about, oh, is it time to eat yet? Oh, is it time to stop eating yet? Oh, what have I eaten today? Oh, what will I eat today? Oh, how many calories is that? Oh, how much fat is that? Oh, like since I've stopped having to calculate all of those things in my head, I think I've been so much more productive in other more meaningful areas of my life. And so my friend, my coaching tip again today is let's think about your relationship with food. Is there a place in your relationship with food where maybe you haven't been entirely intellectually honest with yourself about what your relationship with food actually is? Is it more disordered than perhaps you've ever thought about or noticed before? Again, I'm not prescribing anything. I'm not diagnosing anything today through the show. My only goal is to help you think and sort this out. Is your relationship with food disordered? And is there a chance that perhaps you should be seeking more help, either professionally or through some resources I can recommend? You know, it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to go and start meeting with someone by the hour. I mean, there's lots of less expensive and effective ways for you to see the problem and start working towards healing and freedom. So that's where I'm going to leave you today with today's coaching tip. What's your relationship with food like? Be honest with yourself. Be honest with the Lord because he knows anyway. And ask him to show you. He'll be faithful. Just say, okay, God, hey, show me what I'm missing here. What does it look like to just be normal with food? Because I think for most of us, that's what we want. Well, thanks for listening. I hope something in today's show has helped you stop comparing and start living. Bye-bye. Before you go, if something from today's show blessed you, may I ask a huge favor? Leave a review on your favorite platform. Seeing your five-star reviews is a huge encouragement to me. Not sure how to do it? You can go to compare to who.me slash podcast, scroll to the bottom, and you'll find all the information. And while you're at compare to who.me, check out some of the more than 500 articles on there about body image, comparison, all the things you're thinking about. Plus, you can find out more about my books, or you can grab a time for a free 10 minute call to see if coaching is right for you. I'm so honored to be a part of your journey out of body image and comparison frustration. And I can't wait to hear how God is working to set you free. The Compare To Podcast is part of the Spark Media Network, now available on the Edify Podcast app. Grab the Edify app in your Google Play Store or on the Apple Podcast app. You will be so glad you did.